I'm Dana. I'm Gloria Lee. I'm Isabel Pan. I'm Aubrey Stevens. And, and we're, we're in period seven, seven by ten. The purpose of the lab was to experiment with the RNAi system while working with C. elegans, further shutting off the selected genes of DPY11, ROL6, and UNC22. Being able to recognize the phenotypical differences between the mutants and the wild type N2. We observed the induced mutations and observed what role the actual gene serves in the function of the C. elegans. We also worked on observing different life stages of the C. elegans. In order for this whole process to work, we worked on chunking the C. elegans onto the feeder plate of bacteria. We utilized the cellular process of RNAi to silence various genes in C. elegans, placing them in the feeder plate of bacteria containing double-stranded RNA of the gene. C. elegans will assume the bacteria containing the double-stranded RNA. By doing this, the RNAi pathway will be triggered in the cell. Dicers inside the C. elegans will chop up the double-stranded RNA, creating a small interfering RNA. The small interfering RNA will bind to several proteins, creating the RNA-induced silencing complex. The double-stranded small interfering RNA is then unzipped, leaving a single strand. RISC will then probe the cell to form more matching RNA to the one it's carrying, and the RISC will further bind to the matching RNA to cleave it, in which causes failure in the translation process in protein synthesis. We have to take sanitary measures majorly so that no new bacteria will form on the C. elegans to eat. Another thing that helped no new bacteria to form was adding ampicillin to the plate, which kills bacteria. The bacteria we added was the OP50, which is ampicillin resistant. The result of silencing genes causes mutations in the worm. The mutations of shorter and fatter occur within the DPY11 gene, and the C. elegans seize and die as well when silenced with the UNC22 gene. The overall purpose of this lab includes working with the model organism C. elegans, inducing the RNAi system to turn off a gene, being able to recognize the mutant and the wild type phenotype, being able to identify the four stages of development, and being able to chunk the worms and transfer them to other places alive. Two wild type C. elegans exhibit six different life stages, including egg, L1, L2, L3, L4, and adult. Wild type worms are characterized by an S pattern while moving. Here we see an egg. Here we see an L1 C. elegans, characterized by its small size. Here is an L2 C. elegans, just slightly bigger than this L1 C. elegans. Life stages L3 and older are usually where we see mutations occur. Here is the L4 C. elegans, the largest you will see. It is separated from the adult C. elegans due to the absence of eggs within the stomach. As per data, the gene silencing did not turn out as we planned. The ROL6 and DPY11 sample groups did not show any signs of phenotypic mutation. The UNC22 sample group was inconclusive as we observed very minimal convulsions that weren't enough to justify our claim. Possible sources of error include unwanted bacterial growth in the sample place and mishandling. In conclusion, our group was assigned ROL6 UNC22 and the DPY11 genes to silence. The ROL6 gene inhibits the C. elegans movements to do barrel rolls over and over to form into a C shape. The gene primarily affects organisms' morphology and genetic balance. The UNC22 gene induces seizures within the C. elegans, mostly localized in the middle parts of their bodies. The gene is sensing the mechanical strain of forces during muscle activity. The DPY11 gene makes the C. elegans much shorter and fatter in shape and size compared to the wild type N2 gene. This gene encodes for a membrane protein that regulates body shape. Overall, this experiment taught us a lot about gene silencing. Though we are a bit disappointed about the results of the experiment, they learned that many experiments don't work out the way they are planned. This lab has taught us to be resilient and not to always receive the outcome that we expect. In the future, we hope to maintain sterile procedure and prevent contamination. The results from this lab can be applied to the medical field for gene therapy in humans and to cure genetic diseases such as Huntington.